Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be breaking down the split slot formation out of the Cincinnati Bengals playbook. So, a few reasons why I decided on this formation out of the playbook. It's got some interesting, uh, unique plays that I haven't really seen in other gun split slot formations, such as the wide receiver screen, the fullback inside, I really like the cross weak flood, which I think is in other formations. But the main thing that I love about the formation is that it's got a screen to the left in the HB slip screen and a screen to the right in the wide receiver screen. And you've got a good running game with two very good complementary runs in the fullback inside. And I like to run the HB off tackle as the other one. The off tackle is the default run audible out of the formation. So I'll just go with that one. I do think it is the better one out of the... Out of the off-tackle, draw and power O. I think the off-tackle is the best one. I think it gets the best and most consistent blocking. And there are some other complementary passing plays that are pretty good out of the formation. So I'll just jump into it. First play we're going to look at is the fullback inside. So in this formation, instead of having a halfback and a fullback, you actually have both your halfbacks in the backfield. And you'll see when I run the play, it's not so much as, it looks like a draw almost, but it's more of like an inside zone slash outside zone. It's kind of weird. You have like the option to whether you want to run it up inside or take it outside. So you'll see right there, I kind of tried to cut it up, got four yards. But you could see that when I took the handoff, it was like I had the option rather to whether or not I wanted to cut it up up inside or run outside usually if it's an inside zone it like forces you to the inside more so if it's outside zone it'll make you go to the outside so that you don't really have the opportunity to cut it up very well but in this case you really have the option to do whatever you want right there they sent a corner blitz off the edge which got me in the backfield run it again right there and it's really just a solid run play that you can come out in and establish and make your opponent respect um that can get you consistent yards if they don't have players over there on that side of the line of scrimmage. If they do start moving players, shifting their line that way, or moving their linebackers that way, the down run audible is a great compliment. It's an off-tackle play to the other side. And it gets pretty good blocking right there. He kind of got a block shed, and I kind of ran into him. That's just me being bad. Go ahead and run it again for you guys. And right there, that was pretty good blocking. And that's kind of the alignment you want to run it against whenever there either aren't that many people over there or if they're moving people to accommodate for the fullback inside if you've been hitting them with that. Or you could even start out with this run, make them respect this run, and then hit them with the fullback inside going the other way. It doesn't really matter. It's really personal preference. A lot of the passing game, what I like to do is I like to hit the flats a lot. I like to take advantage of one-on-one -on -one opportunities on the outside. And then obviously you like to hit the screens to make them respect the flats. And not be able to blitz everybody off the edge to try to stop the run. So the quick audibles, the quick pass is slants. Uh, I don't really run that at all. Um, off tackle is the down run audible, which as I said, great compliment run to the fullback inside. Corner strike is the deep pass audible, and I actually do like this play. I uh, like both the flat routes going out the backfield. They really hit the flats quickly, and so if your opponent's not respecting the flats, if they're bringing people up to stop the run, if they're blitzing people, you can pop them in the flats for a quick gain. And just, just to remind them, say, hey, uh, you're not going to be able to, to blitz everybody. You're not going to be able to not cover the flats, because I will be able to hit you there. And then if the flats aren't open, you just kind of read the corner routes, and then your last read is Sanu over the middle. It's right there. Threw the corner out, kind of threw it a little bit early. If it's man-to-man, -man, unless uh, your running backs get a really good release into the flats uh, and beat their man out there, you're probably going to want to look for the corner outs, especially if it's a man blitz. That's the kind of this play's weakness is if it's a man blitz and they bring six, 
the corner routes kind of take a long time to develop, so you, there's a good chance you could get hit before you get the ball off, so just be careful with running this play. Right there, I had Marvin Jones open. Andy Dalton kind of overthrew him. But that's all you want to do. If they if they come down to stop the flat routes and it's zone, more times than not, you'll have the corner routes right behind it. And vice versa, if they drop to cover the corner flat, the corner routes, you'll most likely have the flats open. The play action audible is PAF slide. Um, very good play. You got a crossing route, shallow cross by Sanu. You got Bernard leaking out into the flat. You actually have both running backs leaking into both flats. You got Jones with the backside post, and then Green's on a comeback. What I like to do is I like to fade him for the one-on-one -on -one opportunity. You just kind of make reads. Um, more times than not, man to man, you're going to want to hit the shallow cross by the slot receiver. He's going to be open a lot of the time. If they use her that, or if he's not open for whatever reason, you can look for the backside post. If you have a receiver with good route running, the backside post will be open a good amount of time. And then if you have one-on-one -on, -one on the left side, you can always hit AJ. So right there, I tried to just kind of dump it out into the flat and make something happen. Got bottled up. Probably could have waited for the shallow cross by Sanu. Right here, they're in goal line, so I'm just going to run the ball. But this combination, even just these combination of plays with coming out in the fullback inside and then having the off tackle, the corner strike, and the PA flanker slide, or PA uh, fullback slide, rather, all at your disposal at the line of scrimmage is a really good scheme already in itself. Right there, overthrow. You guys get the idea of the play. Play action. First read is the shallow cross. If he's not open, I look for the one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, the flats, and the backside post. So the other plays that I like out of this formation, I do like this double ends play. I think it's a good play. Uh, the only adjustment I like to make is I fade green for the one-on-one. -on -one. And pretty much the same thing. Read for Sanu's route. He breaks really quickly over the middle of the field. So be prepared to hit him if he's open. You've got the double kind of hitch routes going out into the flats by your running backs. And then you've got the deep dig from the far right receiver, which is Marvin Jones in this case. You just kind of want to make reads. Right there, Andy Dalton. Another overthrow. They must have gutted his throw accuracy ratings after that playoff game. Right there, that's what will happen a lot of times. Sanu's route breaks really quick. And especially uh, if they're trying to use her that area, they won't really be ready for how quickly it breaks. And you'll be able to get it off more times than not. A man to man, it beats man. Uh, you just kind of want to work that route a lot. And then... Uh, check down to the flats or something if it's not open. In that case, I tried to check it down, got three yards. Just something, just another mix-up play to make your opponent respect once you establish your bread and butter. Uh, the other plays out of the formation that I like, I like the slip screen to the left, which I don't really need to run a slip screen for you guys, but it's a very, very good mix-up, especially if your opponent likes to blitz. Or if they're moving a lot of people over to the other side to stop maybe like the off tackle or if you're hitting them in the flats over there or something. Uh, the cross weak flood. I like this play as well. Uh, pretty much same thing. Just fade AJ Green. You've got the deep cross by Sanu. The backside post by Jones. you got both flat routes. Uh, just kind of making your opponent respect a lot of different areas of the field. That was a terrible read. I was kind of talking and not paying attention to what the defense was doing there. But, uh, yeah, just want to make your opponent respect a lot of different areas of the field as well as having to respect the pretty good run game at the same time and just make life difficult for them. Right there, I got hit as I threw. I was trying to hit Sanu over the middle. Try it one more time. Eh. Dump it out into flats. I was kind of feeling the pressure there. But yeah, just another good mix-up play. This is the case for a lot of these plays have, like, crossing routes going from right to left, and then you want the isolated receiver on the left, in this case, A.J. Green. And I believe the final play that I really like out of this formation is the wide receiver screen. Yes, the wide receiver screen. And at first glance, uh, the play art actually has the running back, Gio Bernard in this case, at the play call screen, it has him running out and blocking, and I thought that, I was like, oh god, this is going to be an awesome play, three blockers, but in actuality, Bernard just kind of blocks in the middle and doesn't go out there and block, so you only get two blockers out there, 
which isn't terrible, but not great. And then after running the play a few times, I noticed that the right tackle a lot of times will get caught up and he won't even get out there to block in time. So more times than not, you'll only end up with one blocker out there, which I really don't like at all. So what I did to compensate for that, I pretty much turned it into a halfback like swing screen. So what I'll do is I'll swing Bernard out to the left, or to the right rather, and then put Jones on a fade, and just kind of run it like that. Try to get a block, try to get upfield. Not as effective as the slip screen to the left, but it's just something to make your opponent think about. If they're not, if they're not respecting the flats over there or something, if, they're not, uh, if they don't have a lot of players lined up over there, you think it'll be effective. If they're blitzing somebody off that edge, and you, know, you key in on that, just like that play right there. The computer brought a blitz off the right edge, and Bernard was able to slip right by, behind him. The biggest problem I find whenever I run this play is sometimes you'll get run down from behind if you throw the ball too quickly. You really have to kind of wait and let that defensive end or whoever's on that right side kind of rush the quarterback before you throw it so that you don't get hawked down from behind. So just keep that in mind when you run it. But this is a great compliment to the halfback slip screen and just really complements the formation really well because it allows you to attack uh, pretty much every area of the field. You've got to run to the right, you've got to run to the left, you've got to run up the middle with the fullback inside, you've got a screen right, a screen left, you've got good plays that can attack the flats like corner strike, you've got good plays like uh, PAF slide that attack the middle of the field with crossing routes and posts and that can also get you one-on-one -on, -one on the outside with your big mismatch receivers. So it's just a formation that I found attacks pretty much every area of the field and makes your opponent have to pretty much pick and choose what they want to cover on each down and it turns into a giant chess match. It's pretty much like I think he's gonna throw a screen right here but then if you maybe run the ball the other way you get a huge gain. So it's just something that opens up a lot of mind games, something that can be very effective if you have good play calling. So, yeah, guys, I hope this helps you out. Um, I hope you guys liked it. If you run the Bengals playbook, maybe if you didn't run this formation before, maybe you can look into running it. If you have a custom, you can maybe look into adding this into your scheme if you liked it, if you think it will be effective, which I hope you did. So, yeah, guys, uh, best of luck online, guys, and until next time, I'll see you guys later.